Hi everyone, um, my name is Dr. Johannes Karl. I'm currently an assistant professor in psychology at the Dublin City University. And I um, just quickly want to talk with you about a topic that is really interesting to me and that is also getting more important the more global health research becomes. And that's the question of um, measurement justice essentially across groups. So the question is, are we actually measuring what we think we're measuring when we look at a global context? And to start off with that, um, I originally looked at um, mindfulness. Mindfulness has been quite prominent in the health literature for some time for its supposed um, benefits related to all kinds of like well-being, protection from burnout, protection from um, negative effect, and also increase of health-related behavior. And research on mindfulness has been steadily increasing over the last 15 years. But beside also a general increase, one of the things that has happened is it has also become a more global research endeavor. Sure, like with most research in psychology, uh, a bulk of the research is still done in the Anglophone countries, so predominantly the US, then Great Britain, Canada. But we also see a substantial research interest in um, China and in a variety of other places. And predominant probably amongst the multifaceted measurements of mindfulness is the FFMQ, the Five Facet Mindfulness Questionnaire. It's been cited over 8,500 times and is yeah, probably the most common multifaceted measure. And one of the things that really interested me is given that mindfulness was originally supposed to stem from Buddhist traditions, exported to the West, and then re-exported globally, is how well does mindfulness measurement actually work across the globe? And to test that, um, I looked at a very classic approach to group equivalence. Um, so taking the levels of structural, metric, and scalar equivalence, with structural meaning the structures the same between groups. So group structures can be compared. Metric means that item loadings on the latent variables are the same. So you can compare correlations with that. And scalar means item intercepts and general intercepts are the same, which only that allows you to confidently compare means. And um, we gathered data from around 16 countries, so around 8,500 participants, to look at how well the FFMQ performs globally. And the first thing that we found is that the only two structures that fitted well were a structure where either all variables were allowed to correlate, but you had negative and positive item wording factors, or um, a structure where um, all of them were subsumed under a higher order factor of mindfulness, but also included positive and negative methods factors. The big problem, though, was that looking at the comparability of the structure between those 16 countries, we only found that those countries could agree in the general structure, but the loadings of the items varied significantly between the countries, preventing us really from comparing correlations between those countries or um, comparing means. And one of the big problems was also that um, this non-invariance or non-equivalence was also systematically linked to culture level variables with cultures higher on individualism and cultural looseness showing better performance, so more Western countries. And so the question that we then had was, how, um, how do those methods factors, those positive negative methods factors, are they unique to the FFMQ or do they arise in other measures? And to test that, we took uh, previously published data from 59 countries, roughly 15,000 participants on their subjective happiness scale. That has three positive and one negative items. And what we did is we ran the same multi-group confirmatory effect analysis, but we extracted effect sizes of item differential functioning, which essentially tests how different is the relationship between an item and the latent variable between groups, so with um, relatively small differences here between American and Greek, so that's based on Nye and Raskov's work um, being around 0.26, and then you can have very large ones. And so the question was, how does item wording affect the comparability of measures? And the first thing we found comparing 
all of the different combinations of the 59 countries against each other that um, the negatively worded item performed substantially worse um, in terms of being comparable with nearly uh, showing twice um, the effect size as the positive items. And the really big problem was that this um, effect was systematically linked to the linguistic differences between the samples. So with samples that had a higher linguistic difference, so their language morphology uh, was different, showing a greater effect of the negative item wording. So essentially, the more different in terms of linguistic cultures are, the more difficult it becomes to employ negatively worded items with them. The question then is, is this a problem that vanishes when we look at the group level? And just to check that, we ran a simulation study where we looked at two different groups, one group which included a fixed methods factor um, and the other one didn't, so our baseline. And then we looked at the group level correlation between constructs. And what we found is that with the increasing size of the methods factor, um, the correlation at our simulated nation level changed substantially. So individual level non-invariance and individual level methods factors can substantially influence um, group level correlation. So even if you find meaningful correlations at the group level, this doesn't mean that those are free of bias. And essentially what you should take home from um, the talk today is non-invariance is a substantial threat to making inferences about correlations and mean differences across groups. Can be cultural, can be social cultural, or can be gender. Um, non-invariance is not random, but it is likely exacerbated by measure and sample characteristics. So linguistic differences, cultural um, differences, and also features such as negatively worded items um, uh, double barrel questions, etc. And non invariance is not really ameliorated by aggregation to the group level. And face valid nomological networks, so expected presence and absence of correlations, does not really indicate a sufficient level for comparability of scales. And in the health context, that's quite important given that we make substantial inferences often also about individuals from measures. And if those measures don't perform equivalently, especially across cultural groups, we can make wrong inferences and prescribe wrong treatment and run non-helpful interventions. With that being said, I thank you for being here today. And if you have any questions or interests or you want to follow up, you can contact me at the email below. And thank you.